Hallelujah. Amen and amen, brothers and sisters. We are still considering understanding the end times. We're now on the things to come, the seventh part, which is the great tribulation. Also, a discussion of aspects of the book of Revelation the Lord has given for our learning. And in the previous lesson, lesson 33, you know, the things to come, we looked at the great tribulation part four, and we ended with the reality that the angels that is supposed to sound now made a statement that is war because of the two trumpets that are yet to sound. Okay. And by the grace of the Lord, we've looked at the ones that sounded before and it's so important. Let's remember what he said in Revelation chapter 8 verse 13. I beheld and had an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. Four had sounded. And so in this lesson we'll explore what the Bible says of those extra judgments that are coming upon the earth, part of what is called the Great Tribulation, when the wrath of Elohim is poured upon the inhabitants of the earth after the rapture of saints and the first resurrection and the manifestation of the Antichrist at the you know uh, when he commits the abomination of desolation, is going to be a three and a half years like no one the world has ever seen. You see, people generally say seven years great tribulation that is not accurate the first three and a half years this man called the antichrist who nobody would know as a then will emerge as a stabilizer as one that will bring order out of the chaos on the earth following the rapture he will make a covenant of peace with israel to assure israel of security because israel will get to extreme situation of insecurity with all his neighbors around israel will need a messiah but not a spiritual messiah but a political messiah a military messiah and this man will give you receive so israel will receive this man as a friend he will deceive israel and the church that missed the rapture because he will tick off all the boxes. He will speak churchianity language. He will know how to manipulate emotions and feelings of the church world. He will emerge as a champion of the church and Israel. And this man is likely to be the one who will give Israel permission to build the third temple that Israel has been preparing since 1987. The Temple Institute has been preparing. Everything is ready. Even the red heifer that we used to dedicate the temple is now available after 2,000 years. What is lacking is the political will. And it is likely that the Antichrist is the one who will give Israel the permission to build the temple. So you can imagine how one day, in the middle of that seven-year period, this man walks majestically, walks into the temple, walks in, people will be looking at him, then he goes to the altar, stop the sacrifices, and say, stop, I am your creator, I am your God, worship me. You can imagine, Israel of all people, Israel that didn't receive Yeshua HaMoshiach, is going to reject this man also and say, no, you are not Elohim. You are man. Israel will rebel against him and refuse to worship him. And his anger will be extreme. It's called color. Extreme anger, rot. He will seek to exterminate Israel. And that will flag up the great tribulation. The great tribulation is a three and a half year project. When the rot of Elohim is poured upon the earth, called the Great Tribulation because Yeshua himself mentioned in Matthew chapter 24 that there will be great tribulation such as has never been since the world began nor ever would be. And Daniel also told Israel that it will be a time of unmitigated, inimaginable trouble. Jeremiah also called it a time of Jacob's trouble that people will be so flabbergasted with the extent of the wrath of Elohim, it will be something extremely disturbing. And so, brothers and sisters, 
Why we need to look at these things, we need to understand the book of Revelation was written in types and symbols describing events that will happen. And so the best way to study the book of Revelation is not to allow our fancies to, you know, go haywire, but to use the language prayerfully, the Holy Spirit put together the realities so that we can have understanding without straying. Because the book of Revelation has two features we need to know. One, there's a promise of blessing for reading. Two, there's a promise of blessing for hearing. Three, there's a promise of blessing for allowing the truth there to make us, you know, to influence our conduct, to make us make adjustments. The second thing about the book of Revelation is stated in chapter 22, where there's a warning, don't add, don't subtract. So for that reason, approach we have in looking at these things is to show you what it says that it is and whatever light we have, we share with you and encourage you to go and pray independently and get confirmation from Holy Spirit. And that is how you need to approach every one who teaches eschatology so that you are not taking off course. You don't go off ramp from the body of truth. So let's go to the fifth trumpet judgment and see demonic locusts who are sent to torment a third of humanity. That is what we're going to part of what we're going to look at today. And another thing for the book of Revelation chapter 9, chapter 9, Father in heaven, let your name be glorified. Lord, feed us with your truth. Grant us understanding. Let your name be exalted. Thank you because we know you have answered our prayer. Holy Spirit, do what you do best. Bring light to the scriptures. Exalt Yeshua HaMoshiach. Thank you, Father, in Yeshua's name. Amen. Revelation chapter 9, verse 1. And the fifth angel sounded. Remember, we said, there are sealed judgments. Judgments that come when each seal is opened by Yeshua. Then after that, we have trumpet judgments, and we have looked for four before. We have considered four in the previous lesson. Now we are considering the remaining the remaining judgments of the trumpet, two more trumpet judgments. Okay, then by the grace of the Lord, after the trumpet, the next set of judgments is called the vile judgments or bow judgments, where judgments of the wrath of Elohim are poured upon the earth rim. So let's go back to Revelation 19, Revelation 9 verse 1. The fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven, unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Now, when you hear language like this, it's subject to many interpretations. The Bible scholars say with exactitude, this must be Satan. And they say, well, it's a fallen angel. But he didn't talk about fallen angel, talk about fall from heaven because of an assignment. So, while it may refer to Satan or demonic force, one of his principalities, it is possible, but more importantly, what is more possible is that this is someone on assignment, either an archangel on assignment to do something. How do we know? To be given the key to the bottomless pit is not something given to Satan. The bottomless pit is a prison of sorts for powers of darkness. It is so to, you can't give key to somebody you're in prison. No. So it is most likely a reference to an angel, a senior angel, an archangel. Why do we say this? In the book of Revelation 20, verse 1, I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled after which he must be lose a season. There was one angel that would bind Satan and cast him to the bottomless pit and seal it up so that one thousand years the earth rim will not be disturbed by satanic activity so that Yeshua will rule as the prince of peace over the whole world in the millennial reign. That is the same language. One angel came down with the key. So also we believe this may well be the same angel in Revelation chapter 9. So take note of that, that this 
is someone on assignment for Elohim. The being is given the key to the bottomless pit or abyss. Satan or demonic beings are unlikely to have the key. Then verse 2, And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Take note of the picture. The picture is very descriptive. That when he opened the bottomless pit, smoke arose. So like that of a great furnace. And because of that smoke, the sun and the air were darkened because of that. Men and brethren, if you read Second Peter 2, 4, and Jude 1, 6, we're talking about angels that didn't keep their first estate, those that sinned, cast down to hell and delivered into the chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. And you know that the demonic of Gadara requested Yeshua not to cast him into the abyss and Yeshua put him, you know, cast him to the hearts. Because you remember, when they say to Yeshua, our time has not yet come. And let's look 8, 30 to 33. So brothers and sisters, we now see this release, this opening of the abyss, and the various things that will follow. Verse 3, there came out of the smoke, locust upon the earth and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth neither any green thing neither any tree but only those men which have not the seal of elohim in their foreheads let's explain this in a moment that out of that abyss came out locust is this ordinary locust i throw not it's unlikely to be ordinary locusts. These are demonic beings and look like locusts. Pack a punch like locusts. Locusts have power in their tails to sting. He said it was given to them power. Not Don't hurt any green thing. No grass. Who is their target? Human beings which do not have the seal of Elohim in their foreheads. Why? Because the seal of Elohim is upon his remnant, upon his elect. If you are genuinely born again, you have the seal of Elohim upon you. And those who miss the rapture are still the elect of Elohim in earth. The seal is upon them. So these demonic hordes from hell, from, from the abyss, are asked, do whatever, torment human beings, but Anyone that has a seal, do not touch them. Why? They are the tribulation saints. We looked at in the lesson, the previous lesson, you know, that showed us 12 instances where there is a revelation that there will be tribulation saints. People will be saved during the great tribulation. People will go through the great tribulation and will, they miss the rapture, their eyes of understanding will be opened. When they see that they miss the rapture, some of them are going to resolve, kill me where you want, I won't take the mark of the beast. I won't take the number of the beast. I won't take the name of the beast. And they'll be martyred for the faith. And once they are killed, they make it. Brothers and sisters, then verse 5, And to them it was given that they should not kill them, the human beings on earth that are not sealed. He said, don't kill them. But that they should be tormented five months. Beings that are called locusts. Beings that can torment for five months are going to be unleashed on the earth. Their torment was as a torment of a scorpion when he strike a man. That's how it will be. And you know what it means for scorpion? When people are smitten by scorpion, it's almost delirious. People can reason, people can balance. The pain is extraordinary. And in those days, shall men seek death? People will look for death. They say, look, this pain is too much. I'd rather die. And shall not find it. You look for death, they won't find it. And shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. They will desire to die, death will run away. Verse 7 And the shape of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. 
And on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. These are terrible demonic beings that are sent to go and torment human beings. Men and brethren, with that fifth trumpet blast, we see another dimension of the great tribulation, the wrath of Elohim that leads to unimaginable pain and torment. And it's so important that we understand what you are saying there. The demonic scorpions were asked not to hurt grass because scorpions normally they eat grass. But this one, no. Their target, human beings without the seal of Elohim. In other words, those who were born again, but miss the rapture, they are freed from this torment because Elohim has not appointed his remnant towards wrath. But to obtain salvation by Yeshua, and if they make that value decision, why we keep saying this is for you to know. If for any reason you miss the rapture, make up your mind that what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his whole soul? So it's better to sign off your life, take whatever that comes your way, and of course, martyrdom, and you make it. And so it is important that we understand these things. So they are not going to kill, but to torment. Then let's go to verse 8. And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions, and they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariot of many horses running to battle, and they had tails like unto scorpions, and they were sitting, and they had sting in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. He describes it again to hurt people five times, five months. He repeats it again and then gives description of how they look. But there's something interesting here. Is that to tell you that these are not ordinary no cost, they have a leader. They have a leader. Verse 11. They had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew, language, in Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue had his name Apollyon, Abaddon, Apollyon. Men and brethren, they have a leader. You know, in the book of Proverbs 22, uh, Proverbs 30, 27, the locusts have no king, yet they go forth all of them by bands. This case, they have. So these are demonic beings. And this name could be the name of a principality, but most likely even Satan, one of his names. Among the other names that he has, maybe these names. And so verse 12, one woe is past. Behold, there come two woes more hereafter. The woe. Three woes. One is past. One of the three is bad enough. But an ominous warning is released that two more lie ahead. So now let's look at the trumpet of the sixth angel. Verse 13, and the sixth angel sounded, and I had a voice from the four corners for the four horns of the golden altar. I had a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, that is before the throne of Elohim, saying to the sixth angel, which had a trumpet, lose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. This is serious. Third part. Men and brethren, the four angels were bound in the river in Pretis. He can't be talking about good angels. Angelic beings include the good ones, angels who serve the Lord. Also, angels who fell along with Lucifer when he fell. It is believed that he was able to deceive at least one third of the angels out of the billions of angels he took one third with his rebellion. Many fallen angels walk about freely. And they are the people we contend against in spiritual warfare. A warfare is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness of this age and spiritual wickedness in high places. Men and brethren, as Ephesians 6, 10 to 18 says, But here, these fallen angels are special. They've been in prison for a long time. It is believed that this was during the days before the flood because there was a kind of wickedness upon the earth that was so bad that angelic beings coming to the earth saw good men 
and went in to defile them and created, you know, what some people call the Nephilim or hybrid race of people who were very tall, who had extraordinary strength, giants in those days. So that pollution, it is evident if you go to Genesis chapter 6, you see from verse 1 to verse 5, the description of that period of time in the earth rim. Now, it is possible that four of the principal, you know, demons that engage in those activities were bound at the river Euphrates until this time. Until this time. Check Genesis 6. Thousands of years before Yeshua was born. And since Yeshua was born, 2,000 years so check how long we're talking about not less than 5,000 years. They've been bound. Other demons are around doing Satan's bidding, but these particular ones were bound and they have remained bound. So while humans were wiped off the face of the earth with the great flood, sinners, apart from Noah and his family, you know that angels do not die. And so it is possible that four of them were just bound there at the river Euphrates. And the tenure of the assignment is, t is stated. They are prepared for an hour and a day and a moon and a year. They are bound in the river Euphrates, which played a prominent role in history from the days of Nimrod, the great rebel who inspired the Tower of Babel to the days of Nebuchadnezzar. Euphrates has been a prominent river in history. It was one of the original rivers that flow from the Garden of Eden. I mean, the, the, the head branched out with the Gihon and the Pison, Euphrates, and all that. The Euphrates was the boundary of the promised land, as Elohim told Moses in Genesis 15, 20, 17 to 21. It was also believed that it, it was the boundary of the ancient Roman Empire that was on earth in the days of John. Their mandate is to slay a third part of humans. We're talking about billions. Remember, in Revelation chapter 6, verse 7, when the fourth seal was opened, how the, the sixth, I mean, the fourth beast said, Come and see. They saw a pale horse with death riding upon it and hell following, and power was given over them, given unto him over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, and with death, with the beasts of the earth. So in Revelation 6, a quarter of the earth wiped off. So at current rates, that's about, about out of 8 point something billion, 2 billion wiped off in Revelation 6. Here we see a third. A third. So let's say 6 billion remain after that great wipe off. Now a third is 2 billion again. Can you see the decimation? That is about half of humanity at this stage wiped off in great pain. Imagine that high mortality rate. Then in verse 16, and the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000,000. And I had the number of them. 200,000,000 000 is 2 billion. The number of demonic forces arrayed against humanity during this episode of the Great Tribulation. I mean, it was 200 million, rather, not 2 billion, 200 million. Men and brethren, then he talked about verse 17, I saw the horses in the vision, them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire and of jacinth and brimstone. The heads of the horses were the heads of lions, and out of their mouth issued fire and smoke and brimstone. A description of the demonic army is given here. Out of their mouth, he said, went for fire, smoke, and brimstone. Whether this refers to natural elements or perhaps nuclear devices in modern day language, we do not know. But he said in verse 18, by this, there was three, by these three, these three was the third part of men killed by fire, by smoke, by brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents, and had heads, and with them do hot. So, brothers and sisters, can you imagine what is happening? It's true, some people have speculated, is this talking about, you know, the number of horsemen that could come from a nation like China that has 1.5 billion, that can raise an army of 200 million through, you know, 
conscription? We don't know. We don't know. That's the truth. We don't know. Men and brethren, so it's so important to understand these things because they are written for our learning. When things are written, they are for our learning. The more you know, you know better, you do better. The more you know, the more you can allow the world space to do what it ought to do in your life. So we need to know that since the days of Adam, human beings are hard-hearted. Verse 20, the rest of men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands. With all that is going on, with all the judgments, they repented not of the work of their hand, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass, brass is bronze, and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk, neither repented they of their murders nor of their sorceries of their fornications nor of their thefts. People were hardened. Since the days of Adam, the gene of sin has gone on. And when people sin against Elohim, and the Holy Spirit wants to convict them and they refuse the conviction, they do not yield to the conviction, then after some time, it leaves them alone. They become just hardened. So despite all the wars we have seen, survivors were not inclined to repent of their sins. Rather, they continue to worship devils and idols of material things that are inanimate. They did not repent because they love sin. Brothers and sisters, we're going to continue to examine the great uh, uh, tribulation in a subsequent uh, lesson by way of assignment. Number one, please outline five things you learned, including a summary of the two trumpet judgments that were given today. Two, what is your advice to believers who are careless with their faith in view of what lies ahead? You see, there's a type of Christianity that is flaky. It has no substance. It is devoid of the cross. The void of suffering, the void of pain is all about what God will do for you, promises. So people's faith are not based on realities as God has described in his holy scriptures is based on what God will do for you, what you get from God. So people cannot stand any pain. And listen to this. So a lot of people are in church, yes, but they are not converted. Their names are not in the Lamb's book of life. And you know what? This is something that could be easily solved. Because when we hear the word, if we give Holy Spirit right away, he'll convict us, cause us to repent, and embrace salvation in Yeshua HaMashiach. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, we thank you. We say, have your way. Let your purpose in giving us this lesson be fulfilled. Consensualize us. Challenge us. Bring us to a place where we truly give you right of way to uphold us with your right hand of righteousness. I pray for any brother or sister today who has not been converted, who has not had a genuine new birth experience, who is not regenerated by the working of Holy Spirit on their spirit man. Lord, I pray you do a work of grace, convict of sin or righteous of judgment, and give the grace to have make peace with you even now, so that they will not need to face the rot. And I pray for brothers and sisters who are living outside your will to realize that it is better to be ever ready for the sound of the trumpet, and we don't need to have to face these things but if anyone face it at all, if anyone miss the rapture, give them the grace to take note of what has been taught in these lessons and to know that you still love them, even in that state. Lord, have your way. Thank you for answering our prayer. In Yeshua, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us on this program and watching and we believe you learned something and the Lord bless you. Now it's time to connect with us on our social media platforms. We have a daily live stream on Facebook, Monday all the way to Sunday, every day, by about 10.30 a.m. UK time. And that's the same at Nigerian time. And you, it's either Apostle George, Monday to Friday, uh, to Thursday, Pastor Grace, uh, Friday to Sunday. And then in the evening of Sunday, we have two sessions from 5.30 to about 6, after 6, another one up to 7. So please join us on the live stream 
and you're going to enjoy it. We also visit our website www.gsom.ac to download free ebooks. This course you just listened to, all these lessons, you know, there's an ebook we have free of charge. Everything we do is free. But more importantly, you can actually do your program on, you know, ebooks. You can do your program entirely on ebooks and with this video or anyone you want you can also if you want to do the yes course or be, do the master class you can go to www.kingdomboostclub.com and you can subscribe so that you can do it you can also subscribe to our channels this youtube gsom.tv and we also have a telegram channel gsom media you can send us an email at akclife.tv at gmail.com we love you dearly and we want to partner with you to make sure that the body of Yeshua, Jesus, is empowered with truth. Remember, it is the teach, train, equip, activate, and release paradigm. Absolutely free of charge. Have a blessed day and we'll see you again soon.